Hi hey everyone, Greeno here, and today on Greeno Eats, I have ventured outside of the borders of Dorset. So I'm in a little town called Street in Somerset, which isn't far from Glastonbury. Now Street is probably best known for two things. It's the home of the Millfield Private School, which a lot of posh shows go to, and it's also where Clark's Shoes are headquartered. So they always used to be a little Clark's Shoes outlet place up here. Back when I was a kid even, we'd come up in the summer holidays and get our school shoes as a family. But what they've done since is they have developed it and it's now a proper retail outlet all around this Clark's place. So there's all sorts of different shops, a few different eateries. And we've come up to empty Greeno's wallet a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to have a little mooch around, see what food options there are, see what shops we're going to buy some stuff in and just try and have a nice day out. Let's go and see what we can find. So, as well as a few of the chain type eateries, there are a few independent stores dotted around the outlet selling various things. This one has fancy scotch eggs. There are nice green spaces available for people to sit and enjoy. Oh, and there's another food van here. What are they selling? It's Greek wraps, always a favourite of mine. And there's a place selling artisan coffees too. The massive chimney of the Clark's factory dominates the skyline here. And of course, they still have a presence in the outlet with a massive shoe shop. Although, it is other shops which seem to have piqued the interest of Mrs. Greeno and Litlan. What could they possibly be after in this store? So, it's time for lunch, and we've decided a burger is on the cards. It's going to be the Gourmet Burger Kitchen for us. And they have a deal, which is great, seeing as we have Litlum with us. Let's go inside and see what they have to offer. It's a pretty spacious area with a mix of booths and tables. And a bar type area where you go to order your food. You then help yourself to a range of condiments from a shelf. It's a basic selection, but at least it's all good brands like Heinz and Sarsons. Onto the menu, and as you'd expect, there's a decent range of beef burgers with various toppings, along with a smaller selection of chicken and plant-based options. For an extra charge, you can add toppings to your burgers, and there are extra sauces available too. Of course, you need some sides with your burger, fries, etc. Although they didn't have any onion rings this time, so we plumped for some halloumi. The children's menu looks pretty good value even at the full price, with the drinks and ice cream reasonably priced too. Mrs. Greeno ordered the Korean barbecue chicken burger, which comes with kimchi coleslaw and Korean barbecue sauce. I also went for a chicken burger, the Hay Pesto. Panko fried chicken breast with basil pesto. That sounds great. I ordered fries with mine and a pint of lager too. Got to be done. When the drinks came, they looked pretty good. A nice cold pint of lager and Litland's chocolate milkshake being a decent size. Mrs. Greeno had ordered a bottomless soft drink and the first glass she got was a passion fruit and vanilla flavour. And she really liked it. Of course, that first sip of ice cold beer was always going to slip down a treat. Cutlery is already on the table in a handy pot, so we helped ourselves and waited for our food to arrive. This took about 30 minutes, unfortunately. But I tell you what, Litland's cheeseburger and chips meal look pretty good. And for a quid, well, you certainly can't complain at that. The halloumi was served with pesto and pomegranate seeds and looked really appealing. 
if a somewhat small portion for having cost more than a fiver. Mrs. Greeno's burger came, and on first impressions, it was impressive. Crispy chicken and lots of sauce. Looks really yummy. And my burger looked good as well. Nicely breadcrumbed chicken, bacon, and salad. And I promise there is pesto in there too. The chips were served in a little metal container, pre-seasoned. The same for the sweet potato fries, which look a little overcooked to me. I cut my burger in half so you could see the pesto and the tomato relish. Lovely, vibrant layers of colour. A real feast for the eyes. Mrs. Greeno did the same with her burger, so we could swap half and half. Hers looks a sloppy affair. Not that I'm saying that's a bad thing. Let's try the fries to start. And they weren't bad, just not very hot. But they went well with the mayo and the ketchup. By now, Mrs. Greeno was enjoying her Korean burger. She really liked it. Time to try the hay pesto burger. A good healthy bite there. It was really tasty. That pesto went so nicely with the chicken. The bacon could have been cooked a little more, but it added a nice smoky element to the burger. Now for me to try the Korean burger, and it does look a messy affair. It smells good, but how will it taste? It's nice, if lacking a little bit of punch. I'd have preferred a bit of a chilli kick with it. You can see what I mean about the sloppiness though. I think I need a clean up. <laughs> Time to cleanse the palate with a nice swig of cold lager. Now onto the halloumi. And it looks really pretty, that green pesto and the little pink pomegranate seeds. Pesto worked really well, and those little seeds just popped with freshness. I just wish there had been more than three pieces in a portion, as it meant I only get to eat one. Mrs. Greeno then tried another soft drink, this time strawberry and elderflower, equally as refreshing. And then the meal was done. Right folks, as you can see, I'm back home. <laughs> now I did record an outro up at the Gourmet Burger Kitchen, but having talked about it with the missus a little bit more and thought about it on the drive home, there's a few more things I wanted to add in. So I've come back, I've made some notes, <laughs> and we're gonna have a little talk about it. So let's start off with the pros up there. Okay, so kids for a quid. I think that's always welcome, isn't it? Anywhere in this day and age, People are struggling a little bit, although, as you can see from the receipt that I'm going to overlay here, if you can afford to go and spend 50 quid on burger and chips, basically, for a family of three, I'm not sure you're the sort of person that Kids for a Quid is really aimed at. Um, I mean, it's welcome. It's taken a fiver off of our bill, uh, but I think, you know, if you're, <laughs> if you're really struggling, you're not going to be going out for a 50 quid burger meal, are you? Let's be honest. Burgers, absolutely exceptional. My uh, pesto burger was delicious. The pesto was really, really nice and fresh, really herby, absolutely delicious. The bacon possibly could have done with a little bit more crisping up, but it was it had a lovely smoky flavour, and the chicken was exceptional. It was chicken breast in panko breadcrumbs, fried up really nicely, still nice and juicy inside, bit of cheese on top. It was good. Uh, the Korean chicken burger, which uh, Mrs. Greeno had ordered, she absolutely loved. Now, as you saw in the video, we split the burgers in half and had half each. 
kind of wish we hadn't done that. <laughs> the Korean burger was tasty. I'd have liked it to have a little bit more of a kick to the sauces though. A little bit more of a chilli hit in there maybe. Uh, but she said she far preferred it to the pesto burger. So, you know, <laughs> we should have stuck with what we just ordered really. But I think we both enjoyed the other one as well. Uh, the drinks, they were good. So I had a nice pint. Uh, it was about six quid, which I suppose is standard for a restaurant beer these days. But it was nice and cold, nice and refreshing. Litland's milkshake, she had a chocolate milkshake, and on the kids' menu, that's only £1.50 for about half the size of an adult milkshake, which comes in about six quid. So that's a fairly decent deal as well. Uh, the other half, she had this bottomless soft drink option, which I think was £3 or thereabouts. Um, first one she had was a passion fruit and vanilla one. Then she went back and got a refill, but with, uh, what was it, strawberry and elderflower or something like that? Some really interesting combinations, you know? Not your bog standard Coke, Fanta, that sort of thing. And she really enjoyed them, so that was good. Now, on to the cons. Unfortunately, this list is a little bit longer than the pros. <laughs> so, it's the kind of restaurant where you walk in, you wait at the door to be seated, they sit you down, they give you menus, you pick what you want, and then you go up to the counter to order. Now, plenty of places do that, Nando's and the like. And I don't have a problem with that. I don't need necessarily table service to order. Now, when you pay the bill, which you pay beforehand, of course, when you're ordering, they hand over the, uh, what do they call it, the PDQ machine or whatever it's called, um, for you to make the payment. But now, in this case, it came up with, do you want to leave a tip? Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to leave a tip based upon the service I receive. So if I haven't received any service yet, <laughs> how do I know if I want to leave a tip or not? It just seems bonkers. I mean, you'll quite often get that option when you pay meals at the end of the meal. So the waitress will come to the table with the, the payment machine as you're paying after you've eaten, and then it gives you an option to add a tip. That's fine. But before you've actually had any food or any drinks or anything, before anyone's served you, that seems like a madness to me. Um, in that particular branch of the restaurant too, there were no working toilets, which is really disappointing. So Mrs. Greeno went to inquire with the manager as to what was the situation with the toilets. He basically told her, there's public toilets outside, go and use them. Which in a, <laughs> in a way is true, but the sort of very offhand way he had sort of answered her query wasn't very much appreciated. I looked on TripAdvisor, apparently this situation has been going on for a while, so maybe he's fed up with being asked. But um, yeah, it's been a while since they've not had any working toilets in the restaurant. Now, bear in mind, this is a busy shopping outlet mall. So there are quite often queues at the toilets. And what happens if it's raining? You've got to leave your table in the restaurant, walk outside in the rain, use a public toilet, walk back in the rain again. Personally, I don't think that's good enough. And it seems like they've had a while to get this resolved and haven't. So not impressed with that. The wait for the food was 30 minutes. Now, if it's really busy in a restaurant, I get that. But when we came in and when we ordered, it was probably no more than half full. Now, I don't know whether they had staffing issues or what, but they certainly didn't advise us at the time of ordering that there was going to be a 30 minute wait for our meals. Luckily, the kids menu had some activities on the back of it and there was a pot of crayons on the table. So we could entertain little and a bit with that, but I still think 30 minutes to get burger and chips. That's a little bit long to wait, isn't it? And I do wonder if the chips were cooked right at the start of the time our order went in, because they were no more than lukewarm when we got them, that's for sure. Now, another service issue, and this was noticed by Mrs. Greeno. Now, she works in hospitality some of the time, so she picks out bits and bobs that I might not but there was no check back at the table. So the waiter brought over the food and that was the last we saw of him. Now, bear in mind, this is a place where people aren't taking orders. So all the waiting staff are doing is literally collecting food and drinks from the pass, bringing it to tables and then clearing tables afterwards. They should be buzzing around the restaurant quite a bit. Not one person who walked past our table asked the simple question, is everything okay with your meals? Can I get you anything else? Would you like any more drinks? So they're not going to upsell anything that way, but it's just a personal touch. And I think, again, if you're spending 50 quid on a lunch for three of you, you really do expect that. 
but sadly that was not forthcoming. Um, and the worst thing with the staff, now <laughs> this is probably a factor of where we were seated in the restaurant. So we were on table number one, it was right near to the front door. So we could hear the interaction between the staff and the people who were walking into the restaurant. Now when it got to about quarter to two, I'm guessing staff would start to take their breaks because even though, again, the restaurant at that point was no more than half full, none of the outside seated tables were, were seated at all. Um, that whole area was left empty. They were turning people away, saying there was a 30 minute wait for a table and a 30 minute wait for food. Now, <laughs> that annoys me as a customer when you walk in and you see a half empty restaurant and people are basically saying, we can't feed you for an hour. Um, <laughs> You know, again, maybe staffing issues, who knows. But it was just the way they were telling people. But then after they'd told people and turned them away, they were coming back in and chatting with their colleagues in full view of the, the restaurant and laughing about the looks on people's faces or did you see how upset that guy was, blah, blah, blah. It's just not good enough. And it's bizarre in this day and age where hospitality is struggling, you would think they would try and squeeze every available penny out of people they weren't trying to get us to order anything else they weren't accepting customers who wanted to come in and spend money and to be honest their attitude doesn't make me want to go back you don't feel like a valued customer at all so overall i think for the food i'm going to give it a good seven and a half out of ten the burgers were excellent the little halloumi thing was delicious the chips weren't great um just not warm little and enjoyed her meal so that's fine you know overall on balance about a seven and a half out of ten for the food service it's a three out of ten for me just not good enough particularly at a time where you really want repeat business i can't see us going back there right then folks well little rant over <laughs> That's it from me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget, you can click a thumbs up on there for me. It does help with the channel. And if you're new around here and you're not yet subscribed, then why not click on that little button and ding your bell for notifications and you won't miss anything that comes up on the channel. Like I say, though, that's it from me for today. I will catch you on the next one. Bye for now.